Welcome once again to another episode of Ask the Techies. I'm Dee Lee Beard, and in my iPad review today, I'm going to talk about books. There are lots and lots of book options for you on the iPad, and it's very portable. You can carry a thousand tomes in one little pound and a half device. Okay? So, one of the first things I should point out is that there is the iBooks application. And you tap on that, and you come to the store, and you can see books that you've previously purchased. And you can tell by looking here at the corner if something has a, a red sample in the corner, sample, sample. Um, here's one that's not a sample. Here's one that's not a sample. It doesn't have the little red bar over in the corner. So that's why you can kind of see. They give you huge amounts of samples that you can take a look at. For example, here's the C.S. Lewis. Uh, book and I got about you know 33 pages of pages of content about this size. It's a good enough sampling to be able to see if you like the book, if you like the style of writing of the author, if it's the topic that you want. Really a nice plus. Um, one of the things when you do in the books, you know, you can just swipe through. You've seen this before where you can kind of slide through, but you can also highlight text if you want. If there's a section that you want, you just tap, hold, and then you can select either the word. You can look it up in the dictionary if you want. Let me do that again. You can look it up in the dictionary. Uh, you can search for that word if it's a word you weren't familiar with what that word was. Like, let's go up here to Odyssey. You know, what is this Odyssey thing he's talking about? Then you can do a search on the internet and it will pull you up a, in here within the document. But then you can also search right down here and search Google or search Wikipedia. And you can learn more about Odyssey, that great uh, Homeric myth, I believe. Uh, interesting story, one of the earliest pieces of literature in Western culture. And then I can close out of that. Uh, nope, nope, close out. So if I come here and I want to select something, I can also just grab the corners and select it, and I can highlight it, you know, as much as I want. And uh, then I can hit bookmark, and I can bookmark it. And it bookmarked it green. I can also tap it again and say I didn't like green. I wanted it to be yellow, and now it's yellow. Tap it again and make it blue or unbookmark if I really didn't want to keep that. Change my mind. Don't really want to keep that particular topic. So lots of books you can find in there. If you tap. You can also scroll through the pages by just coming down here to the bottom, and there's a little box you can slide through, and it can take you to that page that you want to get at. There you go. Great book, by the way, The Screw Tape Letters. If you haven't read it, very interesting read. I'm not a big C.S. Lewis fan, but I do like that book. Um, up here at the top, you have an option to buy it, so when you download the sample, you can choose to say, hey, yeah, I want to keep it. Uh, I actually like to buy a copy of that. I like this book. And you can tap right here and you can get the table of contents. That's what that little bulleted list is. So there's the table of contents in the book, so you can easily find the content you're looking for. You can also go to bookmarks, and you can see all the things that you've bookmarked. In fact, it even shows you the highlight for the date that you did it in the color that you did. Now, this can be great for when you're highlighting a book and you say, I want to highlight certain things green and certain things blue, depending on the topic or the category of, of, of what it is. So it's kind of like your own little red letter edition of the Bible or something. Speaking of which, the Bible is a free app that you can download as well. Um, I'm not going to demo the store, but you can click on the store button and it can take you to the Apple iTunes store and you can buy books off of there. The books are comparable to what you find for the Kindle. Uh, they're usually cheaper than a hardback book, but they may be a little more expensive than a paperback book. It depends on the book that you're looking at. Um, so the, that's one app that I wanted to show you. That's the one. You, can download, you do have to download it on the iPad. It is not on there automatically, but it is free. Now another free app that you might want to consider is uh, Kindle. Amazon Kindle. So if you bought books on Amazon for the Kindle, you can also view them on your iPad. Very moving, very nice to be able to move back and forth. In fact, one of the things I have a big minus about with the Apple iBooks is that <clears throat> they only play on the iPad. They won't even play on my computer. And the problem with that is if I change my mind a few years down the road and I don't want to use an iPad or something changes, I'm stuck. Uh, unlike a real book where I've got it forever. And the Kindle, which allows me to put books on multiple devices, including the Kindle or the Kindle app for the iPhone or the iPad. There's a lot more options for the Kindle, so you might want to consider getting books. But the interface is not quite as nice. Here's a sample of a book that I got, Tarzan of the Apes. And you just kind of move and it takes you to the next page. It's not quite as nice and looking at. It doesn't give you a two-page view. You can tap and again you can you can click to highlight a certain section and grab a, a selection and click on highlight and it highlights it for you. So very similar. So your Kindle stuff all there for you. Free books is another app that you can download. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything for the app and the books are free as well. These are basically um, books that have gone beyond copyright and uh, are, a lot of them are done through the Gutenberg project. Let me turn this for you. Pop this out of the back. 
and say, no thanks, don't want to rate this book. And so there's gobs of books in here that you can take a look at. Uh, you can even do a search for books. It's not always easy to see. But if you slide up here, you can see different categories like biography, Bram Stoker, Charles Dickens. You can click on that and it shows you a bunch of books here that you can download. And these are free books that you can get. If you go up here and you slide, like so, it pulls up a search thing and you can type in what you're looking for. So let's say I was looking for, oh, I don't know, let's say Thomas Paine. Let's just do P-A-I-N-E and then hit search. And there we go. There's a whole bunch of things that were written by Thomas Paine as well as Albert Bigelow Paine. Never heard of him actually. Um, but if you do download a book, you can click, you can tap on it, get some information, and just click tap to view it in your library and it downloads it for you. And here's one that I actually did download, The Age of Reason. And so with this one, you just kind of go, this is a little different in that you go, oh come on, you tap at the bottom to go to the next page or tap at the top to, whoops, to go back to a previous page. So you don't slide like you do in the iBooks. It's a little bit confusing because it doesn't have the same kind of interface. Um, unlike the Kindle books and the iBooks, which you actually do a slide of a finger. This one's a little different. You can go to different pages by scrolling through here to actually get through, and you'll see the page number show up up here as I slide my finger around. That way you can easily get to a portion that you want. But they're free books. It's a great way to do that. There's lots of free books that are available at the Apple Bookstore. Let me prop this back up again. I love this stand, by the way. It's very thin. doesn't add much bulk to the, uh, to the iPad. <clears throat> um, in iBooks, there are lots of books that you can download for free, and you can tell in my library which ones are free by the color. They don't have a, if it has a full color cover, then it's one you have to buy. And in here, it's one like Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. That's an open book at this point. And so you can pull it up, and you can read it. And it works just the same as... Um, any of the other books where you can kind of do the finger swipe to change the page. And of course, you know, you have things like this to change the text and make it bigger or to make it smaller so you can view more text at a glance uh, and change your fonts. You've also got a brightness control. One of the things I love about reading books on this iPad is you can read it in low light settings. You don't have to have a lamp shining over everything and you can turn the light down a lot. I don't think the camera's going to show this very well, but when I tap on that little sun icon, I can slide this way down to where it's, it's so low that it's perfect if you're staying up late after night, after dark and trying to read, you aren't keeping your spouse awake in bed by reading late at night because the light isn't big and bright. You don't need a pen light to clip onto this book. <laughs> it works really well. And it's so bright that I've actually been able to read outside waiting on a bus. So there's some book options. Now, these are book apps and these are basically apps for collections of books. The really cool thing about books on the iPad is what's going to be happening with developers that create a book as a standalone app, which can be very interactive. Okay? Let me show you what I mean.